Yo, yo, we back. Welcome to the Honey Badger Hour. It's your boy, Amaloy Rudia. And this week, we're coming at you with the new look, different feel. You know what I'm saying? We had to up the technology. We got the new camera. So you can see my scars and scratches extra close. <laughs> yo, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Honey Badger Hour. It's your boy, Amaloy Rudia, with the exclusive MMA UFC 251 breakdown episode. I hope y'all had a great weekend. I don't know about y'all, but I woke up Monday morning feeling like I did in 2006 when the Miami Heat won the championship for the first time when I was there. And I was in Miami, and we was out there with the pots and pans and the whistles. <laughs> Going crazy, yo. It was live. Anyways, yo, 2FC 251. Tiger Muay Thai goes 2-0. Huge congrats to my good friends and teammates, Peter No Mercy Yan, the Siberian gangster, a new reigning 135-pound champion, and the reigning and defending UFC featherweight champion of the world, my dog, my road dog, Alexander the Great, beats, Alex, beats Max Holloway for the second time, uh, putting an end to the rivalry, 2-0, Ship and sealed. Let's go. Yo, Yaz Island was off the chain. Man, all week long, I've never been like looking up to a UFC event like this one, and I think it definitely delivered, you know. Um, the fights were pretty long. I was listening around. I, the fights ended up ending a little bit long, but I think because of how entertaining the scraps were, you know, like it was like I was really into it, you know. Even the main event, it was like it was a little bit lackluster, but I don't mind. I don't mind it, you know, I don't mind watching somebody, you know, of, it's always, every time they broke, you had that, like, excitement, you know, so, UFC 251 breakdown, on our first fight of the night, we had the battle of the babes, Amanda Rebus versus Paige Van Dam, and Amanda Rebus representing Brazil, got the job done via first round submission with a beautiful armbar. Yo, I've never seen this girl fight, but I think she's going to be a star, man. She had all the good qualities. Her post-fight interview was awesome. Her, she has, like, a really likable personality, you know? Like, when she was talking, you can just... There was something about it that she was, like, real genuine and you can really feel, you know? So, I feel like there's a lot of... There's a lot of... They have a lot of... um, They got a lot of shine right there. There's, there's something good coming in that one. So, I'd like to see her next fight, who she's going to get. But she came away with the big victory off of Paige Van Dam. So, our girl, Van Sant, she's going to have to go back to... Instagram and marketing and dancing with the stars or whatever, but she lost. So fuck, she was trying to make some noise, trying to get a little bit more money, but she didn't get the win. So unfortunately, back to the drawing board. In our second fight of the night, Battle of the Babes. Now we go back to Battle of the Balds. Ah, uh, we had Jessica Andrade versus Rose Namajunas, and man, Jessica Andrade looked really good. She had good defense. Um, she really stepped up her head movement and uh, she had like you seen her doing a lot of drills on the UFC embedded show She was like slipping and moving slipping slipping, but she ended up losing an animus decision. She didn't get the job done uh, Rose won by UD uh, Jessica had a nice little run at the end where she started tagging up Rose a little bit But uh, Rose gets the tie uh, Rose walks away with the decision and now that probably sets up a fight with her and the champ uh, Zeng Wei Li uh, in the future, because I think they're both in the weight, same weight class. They both got victories off of Jessica, and they both got victories off of Joanna. So that should be an exciting match in the future to look out for. Now, bomb, going up to the bread and butter. In our first title fight of the evening, we had our boy and good friend and teammate, Tiger Muay Thai, standout Peter, No Mercy Yan, the Siberian gangster, going against the legend Jose Aldo, you know? So this was a real tell the tell the tell here, man. This was a real interesting story because you got the typical like changing of the guard, you know. You got the old champ making a second run, looking good in a new weight class. He looked better than ever, and then he was coming down to a new weight class, revitalized, looking for a second world title in another weight class. This is huge, you know. And then you got Peter Yan, the up and comer, you know, like the young hungry lion coming up the ranks. You know, this guy has been born and bred to be a champion. You know, I met him in um, I think. 2000 maybe 2014 2015 when he first came to tiger and he was just an amateur boxer maybe one and no pro mma you know and even from then we all knew the um we knew we all knew this kid was going to be a champion you know so man uh crazy five round war peter yan walks away with the vicious tko in the end it was just too much he was just a little bit too much his pressure and his tactics you know like he was oh man it was a super impressive fight uh 
First round, Aldo came out looking good, you know. Aldo came out as good as he ever looked. He came out, um, Chris Bosking, uh, awesome boxing, nice head movement like always. Um, but then Peter Yan was able to catch him a little bit in the first round, hurt him, and then he hurt him with some vicious ground and pound. And Peter has some hard bones, yo. Uh, I trained with Peter quite often, and especially in quarantine, we were getting ready because he knew that he had a big title fight coming up, you know. So he, when he got when the fight card was announced and the Aldo fight was announced, he had already been preparing for a long time because he knew that uh, even during quarantine, he knew that it was his time. And this is before even Cejudo retired. So, uh, yeah, man, super excited about this one. Peter Yan was able to fight a little bit, man. He hurts Aldo in the first round, and then Aldo was able to come back and start picking up the pace a little bit in the second, but Peter was just too much, man. He was just too much. He ended up, um, Aldo, he made, what's, what's so impressive is though, he made Aldo switch stances. I'm sorry, he made Peter Yan switch stances. So, Peter Yan finished Aldo, and he finished him from Southpaw, where he wasn't, and he usually fights Orthodox. So, man, just, you couldn't ask for more. Like, he had everything. You know, he fought an ex-champion. He had to fight adversity in the beginning of the fight. You know what I'm saying? Like, he had to get through the, he had to, bro, Aldo's leg kicks were looking nice. Nice. He was hitting him. Boom, boom, boom. Once Peter, he made the adjustments that he needed to in, in between rounds, he switched stance, and he started to dominate with his pace and his pressure, you know, and his boxing was just so slick. He had that Johnny Boy boxing, man. Boom, boom. A few times going body, body, head, head. It was beautiful, man. And then Aldo, too. Aldo was going body shot, and then every time Aldo would come back for the, every time Aldo came in with the body, uh, uh, Peter would always just counter, counter, counter the body shot with the check hook. Boom. So, man, beautiful performance. He ends up finishing him in the end. Oh, by the way, Fuck you to the referee, the worst referee we've seen in a long time. It's like, I don't know what is going on in MMA, but it's like, yo, these referees are either garbage. It's like they either stop the fight too soon or you stop. The, it's like they stop the fight way too soon or you stop the fight way too late. You know, it's like in the Dominic Cruz, Henry Cejudo fight, this guy gets dropped in the first round, two time world champion. He's getting up. Trying to, he's in the process of getting up. So obviously he's not unconscious because he's standing and moving, getting hit. And at the same time, then they stopped the fight right away. You know, it was like crazy. And then a few weeks later, this guy. Not, and then when and then when Peter got Aldo, it was bad, man. You know, like Aldo had Peter. He had, um, Peter had Aldo against the fence. He was controlling the wrist. He broke his base down. He had him in the Khabib trap. You know that we work this a lot. And he's hit boom, boom, boom. You know, he starts pounding Aldo's face in. And then right there, the, the, when Aldo's fence was against, uh, when his back was against the wall and Peter had his arm trapped, this guy has one arm and he can't defend himself. Obviously, the referee who's never trained, obviously, he's never trained before because he's got to know that this guy is then defenseless, you know. And I think the only reason why Aldo moved is because he had to or else he, he was literally going to die. You know, I think he was like, oh, obviously, this referee's not going to stop the fight. So then he had one last ditch effort. Aldo goes to all fours, doesn't even try to get up to his feet, just goes to all fours and covers up. And the referee is just sitting there watching Peter beat on him for like 30 seconds. It was crazy. I remember I was like screaming at the, yo, I was screaming at the TV. I was like, yo, stop the fight already. You know, it was like making me crazy, yo. So I don't know what these referees are doing or where they find them or how you even apply for the referee job. But the ones that the, and then what's crazy is these referees are bad and it's at the highest level. It's like it's the UFC. It's not like we're watching a, a show in the barbecue beatdown and the referees are like, you know, no, it's like at the highest, highest level, a world title match. You have a, a you know, Jose Aldo has got to, like, this guy's losing years off his life every second the referee's just sitting there. So I think he was just, I feel like he was giving him a chance because he's a champion, you know, but it's because he doesn't fight. The reason why the referees are so bad is because they don't fight. If they don't fight and if they've never competed, they don't understand when the body, like, they don't know when the guy is broken and when he's not or when the guy still has life. They have no gauge, you know? And when you've been there before and you've been hurt, or if he, this guy has ever been punched in the mouth before, he'd probably know how the fuck Aldo is feeling. Like, you could have heard, you could hear the shots from the TV. So, just the incompetence in the judges, and I'm sorry, the incompetence in the, in the referees prevails once again, but... Luckily, it wasn't an early stoppage. You know, I guess you'd rather a late stoppage than an early stoppage, you know. So, our boy Peter Yan, no mercy. Man, congratulations to Peter. And he just had a kid, too. So, he's two weeks old. He's a brand new father. He has a three-year-old son. Now, he has a brand new baby boy. So, congratulations on your family, man. And uh, 
man, just like nobody deserves it more. You know, this guy's a family man first. I remember in quarantine how motivated he was. He'd been working with Johnny Boy since the beginning. These guys have been, they've been working together, eyes on the prize for a long time now. So, you know, Peter Yannis was a champion way before the UFC. You know, before his, before he was in the UFC, he was the ACA champion for, or the ACB champion, which is like the biggest, it's the best promotion in Russia where like those, any, all the champions there could easily be like top three contenders right away in the UFC, you know? So like early in his career, he, he went, uh, he fought for them early on, you know, fought for the title right away within three or four fights, I believe. And uh, he only has one loss, and that loss is a fight that I thought he won. You know, so now his reign continues, and that fight that he, Peter has one loss in ACA, and um, and it's a fight that I thought he won. The guy took him down a couple times, but every time the guy took him down, he put him in an armbar or a triangle attempt right away. So I don't even believe that he lost that fight. And then he got the immediate rematch, and then he smashed the guy. So... Then that's his only loss. That he had a fight that he already avenged. So he continues his reign, man. This he was MMA junkie's number one prospect a few years ago, also. So um, this guy was born to be a champion. So nobody deserves him more. Congratulations, Peter Yan. We got a new bantamweight champion. I saw Henry Cejudo was uh to make was trying to stay relevant, making tweets. You know what I'm saying? I was yeah. like, yo, Henry, Henry Cejudo, dog. Listen, either stay retired and re- keep your consciousness, or Try to fight Peter and get retired again. You know, either stay retired or get retired twice. Up to you. Like in Thailand, like they say, up to you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, all right, boom, bam. In our second title fight of the night, we got our boy Alexander Den- Alexander the Great Volkanovsky versus Max Holloway. And our boy remains and still, baby. Alex stays, remains champion. All right. Max Holloway came out, man, Max Holloway came out, he definitely made the adjustments he needed to make from from fight number one. So all this whole time after he lost, I remember he was going on the Joe Rogan, on any time, anybody that put a microphone in his face, you know what I'm saying? He was like, yo, I didn't, he's like, I didn't think he lost that fight. So everybody, the questions were, was Max Holloway going to make the adjustments, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That he needed to make in order to beat Volkanovski. And when he was the way he was talking before the fight, you were like, damn, if this guy didn't make the adjustments, then it's going to be a long night for him. Well, obviously, he made the adjustments. The first two rounds, he came out, he looked good, he looked, you know, he made, you know, he was countering Alex's kicks with his own kicks, and he was able to catch that nice high kick in the first round, I believe. And he had some nice, like, he was able to, he, he changed his in range boxing a little bit, and he changed his approach, but. Yo, Alexander, like the champ that he is, he made the adjustments in between rounds that he needed to make, and he came through with a big third round and started the momentum started to change right away in the fight. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, he started dictating the pace. He started putting he started putting Max against the against the fence. He started using his jab, and he was able to slow down Max big time. You know, which just goes to show you. You know what I'm saying? What a ch- it was, man. Really, really slick, 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 slick. So, third now. So what? Third round. So now we're going into the fourth round. I had Alex one. I had I had the fight two to one. Right, I got Max definitely won the first two two rounds, and I thought Alex definitely won the third round. That's going to be the closest round, but I have the, but I have a theory on this anyway, so it doesn't matter. Right now, rounds four and five, I think Alex clearly won. He dominated. Right, Alex is closing the distance, keeping the pressure. He had he and then now Max's face is all bloody. You can see the wear and tear damage, and he put him against the fence, and he started sealing his takedowns. And for me, this was the most important impress- This was the most impressive part of the fight. You know what I'm saying? We've never seen Max put on his back, and Alex was put- able to put him on his back multiple times. And not only was he able to put him on his back, he was able to put him on his back in the fourth and fifth rounds, which I feel like uh, weigh in a lot more. You know, and like, yo, to make a long story short, to beat the champ. You got to beat to be the champ. You got to beat the champ. You know, so there's no way. Even if round three, like. I thought Alex won round three. That's gonna be seems like the round that everybody is like un, like not sure about where you see the most. But I don't understand how you can win a title losing the. I don't understand how you can win the world title losing the fourth and fifth round. When Alex beat, when Alex beat Max, he he washed him five nil. It was a whitewash, dominated. You know. Now Max comes back. He does a little better, make the adjustments. But Alex just showed the champion that he is. You know. Oh my God, man! He refused to lose. That was <laughs> awesome, dog. He started putting the pressure. Started finishing with the takedowns. Started closing the distance with his strikes. He was hitting with a nice jab too. And then he kept. If you notice, he was hitting him with a lot of nice lead hooks. Boom, boom. Max's face got bloodied up, and he got that big takedown in the end to steal the fight. You know. So, oh man, this one got me pumped up, dog. 
Like, I was, I'm so proud of Alex, man. Like, no, man, this guy works hard, you know? Like, yo, I know they probably didn't have the greatest camp, but they did every, but they they had to get special, they had to get, bleh. this quarantine training had to be crazy for everybody, you know? But I know Alex had to get special, he had to get some special, um, he had to get permission from the government to oh, allow yeah, the yeah. group of guys, and he had to get like a group of guys from Australia to come down. I don't know if they flew down. Or if they drove down, because I don't even know if they can fly, if they had domestic flights in Australia, you know? It's true right now. So, yeah, so we got to get him on and see what was up about that, you know? But, yo, he had he did his camp with the big Joe Lopez with Master Splinter. Big Joe. At freestyle. Yeah, congrats, guys. Man, his wrestling looked better than ever. God damn, that Amazing. wrestling is hot. Hit him with the outside trip, with the inside trip, with the body lock. You know what I'm saying? So just a true championship effort, you know? Like, yo... It's like, you know, this, this guy, there was no way you were going to take that away from him, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, he had to, yo, like, um, yeah, Max, he did good. I think he got coke. I think he did. I think he let his success in round one and two. Um, I don't know, but that's what I feel like he does. Yeah, he had some good rounds, but when it counted, the champ came through exactly like the champ does. So, the remain, and still, the title remains in Australia at Freestyle Fighting Academy. It was so good to see uh, Big Joe and everybody, man. We've seen brad and eugene and everybody in the corner so man of course people are gonna be like oh you're biased because you're alex's teammate i was like yo no shit dog you know what i'm saying i was like of course i'm gonna be fucking biased yo honestly even if my dog lost every round and he got the big decision i'd be like i don't know what the fuck you talking about <laughs> you know what i'm saying it's like yo even if the people thought even if even if i thought um even if, it doesn't matter yo it doesn't matter because i'm not so of course we're gonna be a little bit biased but that's the way it is, dog. That's life. You feel me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Anyways, and then in the main event, damn, it's crazy. Yo. We could have just finished the prediction with that. Now, Mazdal, and then we had Mazdal representing the 305 versus Usman. Yo, I thought, like we said, you know, like this is Usman. I got to give Usman a lot of props, yo, at the end of the day, because he was able to shut Mazdal down and he did what he needed to do. However, I think he won the fight. But he definitely didn't beat him. He got two cuts on his face, which we saw were from the headbutts. You know what I'm saying? So Usman takes the unanimous decision. He's able to keep. He's able to shut down Masvidal, keep him against the fence. He did a really good job, man. Listen, he was able to take him down, and he had a lot of pressure on him, yo. He had a change of opponents mid-fight. You know what I'm saying? So like, imagine like you're about to fight. Then you get you're about to fight your boy. You're getting ready for one style. Then the fight gets canceled. Once the fight, once you know that your opponent's out on fight week, your head's already going to like this is some weird spots. You know what I'm saying? Especially if you're training hard, you put everything into it. You're probably already making weight. And now, once you start making that weight, this is when the real battle starts, you know? Because every time you're, that whole week that you know you gotta start making weight, you're thinking about fucking, you wanna have a little bit of this, you wanna have a little bit of that, you know? You might be hungry at night, you're like, fuck, if you just go down and get like a little piece of bread or something, you know? So like, this is the part where you're like, most like, you gotta stay the most vigilant, like fight week, you know? You gotta get the weight down, it's like the last battle. And then you get a call that your opponent got COVID, you know what I'm saying? So he said that I can only imagine what the what the mental the psyche is going through that you know he's got to go through the opponent change the waves up and down you know then on top of that he's got then he he left he left uh, Las Vegas after quarantine was on a flight back home to see his daughters then in a layover he gets told that the Mazdal ends up taking the fight he takes a plane back to Vegas cancels his other flight so just chaos chaos you know so big ups to Usman he got the job done. I was definitely going for my boy the 305 all day long, but I think the hopefully uh, he'll get it. He'll get. It. I I would like to see a rematch right away. You know what I'm saying? Because he beat him up, but I don't know. He barely did anything. So I would love to see. I would like to see Masvidal on a camp in a rematch immediately. But Dana White didn't seem like he was too down for that. But I don't know what other fight they want to see. I would think I would put I would put the, maybe a rematch. Again on Fight Island, just run this shit back, yo. Masvidal and Usman, and then you put maybe Gilbert Burns versus Leon Edwards on the undercard for number one contender. But that's the thing, yo. What do you do with Leon Edwards, yo? I mean, sorry. What do you do with Gilbert Burns now? Mm -hmm. He had the title shot. Now you're gonna take away his title shot because he got COVID. So I feel like now you gotta give the title shot to Gilbert, and Masvidal's gotta go to the back of the line, dog, which is crazy. But 
There could be some big money fights for Masvidal. We That's the thing with Masvidal. He has options. He's got options, dog. He's got options. He's he got created options. options for himself. And this especially, just taking this on short notice, yeah, he might have lost a fight, but he gained a lot of fans with a lot of the stuff he did this week. It was very shrewd and very perfect timing. It seems yeah. like um, Damn, it, it, a lot of it was out of his control, but a lot of it was also stuff that he kind of been been doing for a while that he just kind of waited on. and like Like what we were watching this week, the full-time fighter on Vimeo. Yeah, you know, shout like out that. to uh, yo. So that y'all support the, the cause. We saw, yeah, we watched. Man, we were watching the. He was getting, he was getting ready. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But like, you could tell there was little laps too. Like in the last video, you could tell that was a while. I was like, just when the quarantine was going on, was her last video of training. You know? Yeah. But um, listen, we can see we got the we got the Nate Diaz rematch. We got a Conor McGregor super we got, fight. Yeah, that's that's you a possibility. And then you always got the rematch with Usman. Mm-hmm. Or. Or how about Kobe Covington, dog? Then we got the hate. Then we got the we got the rivalry. Kobe Covington versus Masvidal. That's another big one. That's another one. You know what I'm saying? So that's some huge fights. That one is gonna be a head trip because those guys were boys, yo. They and were yeah, boys, man. boys. I was even that's, thinking. That's a. You know what? With all the history between those two, they can build this up. They can really build that one up. There's gonna be some serious trash talking. Mm. There will be some serious trash talking in that fight. That will be a dope scrap. So, there's options for Masvidal. He got the big payday. It's not the end of the day, yo. So, anyways, guys, UFC, our UFC. We're gonna wrap it up with our UFC post fight show. We still got JPs here, and don't worry, we're gonna have our next podcast. We're gonna have our regular podcast, but we're gonna try and do a couple of these. You know what I'm saying? And. Um, Feel it out. We're going to keep on putting out content. Let us know what you guys think. And be safe. Train hard. Always do your best. Love you guys.